Having said all of that, I am going to take my seat for a moment, and we're going to start the program off by inviting Sandy to be our first speaker of the morning. Thanks, Michael. Okay, now what Michael didn't tell you is that he wanted me to make sure that you all knew about the American Diploma Project research in the states and what's happening in all the states, and that I had to do so in seven minutes, or I think you might have a hook under here. So I will do that and probably talk pretty quickly to at least get through the basics and what I think some of the high points are that I wanted to make sure to share with you, and then really would look forward to questions after we hear from everybody else. The American Diploma Project started in 2001, and it really started as a research project with Education Trust and Fordham, and at that time the National Alliance of Business, to look at standards in a really different way. And the different lens that we took at that time was to not just ask, what is it that subject matter experts think kids ought to know coming out of high school in the core subjects of English and math, but what do employers and professors and post-secondary institutions expect graduates to know? And maybe not surprisingly, by taking that lens, spending two years talking to professors, to employers, both two- and four-year institutions, we found a remarkable amount of similarity in terms of what employers and professors expected for students to be able to be successful in good jobs in first-year courses, and we also found that compared to current state standards, what everyone expected high school grads to know was not at all what we were expecting high school grads to know. So there were some important findings, and those are that the expectations of employers and professors aren't really bound by state lines. That, again, remarkable similarity no matter who you talk to, what kinds of institutions, what kinds of employers, and it didn't matter what sorts of states. People expected very much the same thing. And, again, standards just really didn't at that point measure up. The translation for what that kind of looks like in terms of courses is four years of English, high-level, grade-level English, and four years of math, including Algebra II and beyond. Very different expectations. We know that there's an expectations gap. We knew that looking at those standards and looking at what we were hearing from employers and higher ed, and we see it in other places, too. Remediation rates are an excellent indication of the real expectations gap between what we allow when we give someone a diploma and how prepared they really are for the next step. We're lucky that we have open access institutions like community college, but they're only open access until you go and you take a placement exam and you find out you're not ready, and that's a stunning result for a lot of students and very unfortunate. We also know that if you end up in remediation, your chances of going on to getting a two- or four-year degree are pretty low. They're under 50%, so it's a pretty distressing position to be in. And maybe most importantly, we know from research we did with Peter Hart in 2005 that high school graduates really understand this all too well. When we asked recent high school grads what they thought about their high school experience and if they knew then what they know now, they uniformly say whether they're in college or whether they're in the workplace, I really have some big gaps. I really have some big gaps in my substantive knowledge in what I need in mathematics and English and all of the other skills that go along with that. And interestingly enough, to sort of follow on to what Michael said, about 80% of them said, you know, if I had known and if my high school had expected more out of me, I would have taken harder classes. I would have really challenged myself because I didn't know what I was really going to need for the next step. We also know from some pretty interesting research that rigorous course taking is really one of the best ways to close the equity gap. And mathematics is really the perfect example of this. You can actually sort of track who's most likely to not only enter college but will complete college by how advanced the math courses they took in high school were. It's especially important for low-income and minority children. Their rates of college success go from about 35% to about 60% to 70% if they've taken advanced math courses. It's even more profound for poor kids. 
And we know also from some of the research we and other people have done is that kids in those circumstances are, by and large, not taking those classes, not because they're not interested. We know middle school kids, most middle school kids think we're going to go on to college and they think we're going to go on and even get advanced degrees in really overwhelming numbers. But there's just a big question about availability and where those courses are and if they're available. So that's where the ADP network comes in. It's driven by governors and policymakers in the states who said, listen, we really need to close this gap. It's having an economic impact in our states and it's having a big impact, we know, on the kids in our states who really aren't prepared for the next step. So in 2005, 13 states joined the American Diploma Project Network at the National Education Summit. We're up to 34 states today. It covers about 85% of public school kids in the United States. And as a result of the work that those states are doing, which I could take much more than another 10 minutes with, things really have changed on the policy level. In 2005, there were only a couple of states, two states, that had college and career ready standards. We're now up to 24 states. Most of those states who've actually reviewed their standards and can say with some confidence that they've set their peg at the appropriate place. In 2005, there were only two states that had graduation requirements that required students to take four years of English, four years of math, and science and social studies and all the rest of it. Today, 20 states in the District of Columbia are at that level. And so it's really kind of turned the system on its head in a lot of ways when you think about access to courses. Now the adults and the system really have to figure out a way to make those courses available because the policy is now in place. And it really has, in a lot of places, ended sort of pernicious practices like tracking. Instead of fighting your way into hard classes, in a lot of states now you have to figure out a way to fight your way out of hard classes. All of that is probably a great framework for the rest of the discussion, but I should make sure that I'm not too Pollyannish about this and say that having the policy in place on assessment, accountability, graduation requirements, and standards, it's just really the beginning. There are huge implementation challenges. We really feel, along with our other partners in this work, that the policy has to be right. You have to get the policy right because that sets the tone for everything else you're doing in the state. And by raising the bar and raising the bar at a level that will really prepare all kids, not just some kids, but all kids for college and career, you're doing just that. So I look forward to answering any questions you may have later on. Thank you. 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 Thank